If you're looking for a versatile middleweight sports bike, that costs less than 10 grand, the Honda CBR 650R and Kawasaki Ninja 650 might be at near the top of your list. In this video, we'll compare specifications of both bikes, side by side, and weigh the pros and cons, to hopefully help you decide which bike is best for you. The CBR 650R, powered by an engine with more cylinders, is capable of producing 95 horsepower on the crank, which is 27 more than the Ninja. Torque-wise, the Honda and Kawasaki churn out almost similar numbers of torque, with the Ninja being higher by just a mere 1 newton meter. Although the torque numbers may be similar, these bikes make power in different ways. The Ninja 650 had peak power achieved at lower RPM, which gave the bike a more torquey engine. It also seems to have more kick at the very beginning of the rev range, right when you crack open the throttle, while the CBR has a smooth and linear power delivery from early to mid-range, and then shows its potential and true power later, starting at 5000 RPM upward, followed with strong top-end grunt. This means, you have to rev and work the CBR's engine more, to enjoy those 95 horses that the CBR's offers, which a bit harder to do in heavy traffic. Then, at the acceleration test, the CBR is a cut above the Ninja, at both tests. Weight-wise, the CBR is more hefty, with 15 kilograms more curb weight than the Ninja. Then, in terms of power-to-weight ratio, the power output advantage of the CBR is simply too big to bridge, with the CBR's ratio being 28% higher than the Ninja. By looking at this data, we can see that although both bikes are of the same class and type, they are trying to attract different kinds of riders. The CBR are for those who are looking for super sport performance but are willing to compromise the power of pure super sport to have more road use capability. On the other hand, the Ninja 650 is for those looking for a sports bike that will be primarily used for long range riding or as a commuter bike whose priorities are comfort and rideability. Next, in terms of price, the Ninja is more affordable, with prices starting at $8,299 for the non-ABS version, and rising to $8,999 for the ABS KRT replica version, while the CBR comes in at a $9,899, with ABS included. The Ninja 650 is powered by a reliable and bulletproof parallel twin engine, based on the continuously updated and revised Kawasaki ER6F motor, which dates back to 2006. Powering the CBR 650R is a more sporty and peaky inline four-cylinder engine that is based on the previous generation, the CBR 650F. In terms of maintenance or service schedule, inspections are recommended for both the Ninja and CBR around every 6,000 km, and oil change, at around 12,000 km in ideal conditions. The valve clearance check interval for the Ninja is around 24,000 km, while for the higher revving CBR, the interval is surprisingly much longer, at every 38,400 km. Bear in mind that these are recommended numbers for the United States and Canada models, and the recommended service frequency may differ in other regions. Both the Ninja and CBR have the same engine displacement capacity, of 649cc with a short stroke or oversquare layout. The CBR has a compression ratio of 11.6 to 1, which is higher than the Ninja, and needs to be fed with fuel that is RON95 or higher. Both engines are liquid-cooled and have a double overhead cam setup with four valves per cylinder for the valve train. Power for both bikes is passed through a six-speed wet multi-plate clutch transmission that comes with an assist and slipper clutch. The fuel capacity of the CBR is slightly larger by a quarter liter, and then the CBR's engine, which has two more cylinders and a higher compression ratio, is gulping more fuel per 100 km than the Ninja, around 13% more. With better fuel efficiency and an almost similar tank capacity, the Ninja 650 has a longer riding range, around 34 km more, per fully fueled tank. With a price range of less than $10,000, the features are fairly basic, and don't expect cutting-edge features and fancy electronics such as an IMU sensor, cornering ABS, or even a quick shifter on these bikes. Both bikes have standard, dual-channel ABS brakes, and the throttle are cable-operated with no ride-by-wire. There is a traction control system on both bikes. 
The Ninja has the two-step KTRC, or Kawasaki Traction Control System, with Mode 1 being less intrusive and Mode 2 being more conservative, intervening earlier than Mode 1. The KTRC can also be turned off entirely, while the CBR has a more simple system called HSTC, or Honda Selectable Torque Control System, with no mode selection and only on or off choices. The CBR is equipped with a more high-end, racy upside-down type suspension, while the Ninja has conventional telescopic suspension. On the dash, the newest Ninja 650 gets a TFT display, while the CBR still uses an LCD display. The Ninja also gets Bluetooth connectivity to your smartphone, through the Kawasaki Radiology app, which allows you to view vehicle information, riding logs, phone notifications, and general settings. The Ninja 650's frame is a tubular trellis made from high tensile steel, while Honda opted for a more sportier, perimeter or twin spar frame for the CBR, which is also made from steel. For the Ninja, the suspension duties at the front are handled by a traditional, cheaper to produce, and easier to maintain conventional telescopic fork with a 41mm diameter from KYB, with no adjustability. While Honda equipped the CBR with a more superior 41mm upside-down fork from Showa, which is also non-adjustable. At the rear, both the Ninja and CBR have monoshocks, that can be dialed for preload. Reports from users said that the Ninja has a softer suspension setup, which better at soaking up bumps, while Honda's setup is a bit on the stiffer side, which performs better on twisty roads. Both bikes have cast aluminum wheels, and for the Ninja, stopping power is provided by Nissan two-piston calipers with axial mount calipers, gripping 300mm pedal-type discs up front, while a single Nissan caliper chomps on a single 220mm disc out back. On the other hand, the CBR is equipped with better performing brakes, radial mount four-piston Nissan calipers that bite onto a pair of 310mm floating discs up front, complemented by a Nissan single-piston caliper and a 240mm disc out back. The Ninja 650 is more compact, with a 40mm shorter wheelbase and a 10mm slimmer width than the CBR. Combined with its lighter weight, the Ninja 650 feels more nimble and agile, making it easier to maneuver in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. The front tire size profile is similar for both bikes. The CBR gets Dunlop Sport Max D214 for its shoes, while the Ninja gets Dunlop Sport Max Road Sport 2, which many riders say has more grip and better performance in both dry and wet conditions. Besides the weight and size, the Ninja also has a slimmer tire with a 160mm width, which contributes to its nimbleness. While Honda opted for a wider 180mm rear tire, which offers more grip but requires a higher lean angle for a given speed and also carries more rotational mass. The Ninja's seat height is 20mm lower than the CBR's. Then, in terms of ergonomics, with a handlebar that is mounted above the triple clamp and pegs that sit low, the Ninja has a more upright and comfortable riding position. While the CBR's has clip-on handlebars that are mounted beneath the top triple clamp, combined with its higher mounted foot pegs, give it a more aggressive and sportier riding position. But don't worry, it's not overly sporty and still far more comfy than pure super sports. Here is the sound of a Ninja 650 with an Acropovic exhaust system installed. And here is the CBR 650R, also with Acropovic's full system installed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.